Hi, welcome back to the channel. Stage 4.25 GTR Litchfield review. Where do we start? Experience down in Litchfield to begin with. Experience down there was uh, very, very good. Um, contact and, and talk of what was happening in the car, what we're going to do again, was very, very good. Um, basically, I made the phone call. I had a stage two in this car. So obviously I had the white pipe, the exhaust. So my initial thoughts are, well, this is going to be one of them garages. They're actually going to say, well, no, we can't use our exhaust. We can't use our white pipe not the case, Litchfield were very, very good. Um, so I was able to save a lot of money on the rear back box and the white pipe. So of course, all I needed was the down pipes, the 1100cc injectors, the hard pipe air intake kit with the cones, and obviously the, the map for the engine and the software update on the gearbox. So Litchfield, were very very good in that way um saved me a lot of money and we're very very truthful and upcoming in that respect gets to litchfield to be honest amazing setup your know, waiting area obviously you know fantastic somewhere to sit a few pistons to look at view into the workshop and the only complaints i had there was no water in the big water but but those facilities there for making coffee, whatever else. But again, Litchfield, keep an eye on the water. We had no bloody water. Anyway, uh, when you go down there, be, be prepared to look at GTRs. GTRs are nothing but GTRs. I mean, I love this car dearly, but when you're surrounded by about 30, 40 GTRs, it gets a little bit boring. So, anyway, right. Moving swiftly on, that's enough about Litchfield. All I can do is thank Litchfield enough. Well, I can't thank them enough for what they've done. Um, they saved me a lot of money, great people to deal with, and when they say they're going to do something on time, I actually had the vehicle back on time with additional work. So a big shout out to Litchfield. Right, swiftly on. Right, the car itself, what changes have Litchfield made? How does it feel to drive? Gearbox, we'll start with that. Before the gearbox was played around with with Litchfield, first gear used to make me dick move, basically. You put in first, this car, fuck down, the very harsh, raw launch. It would pin you back, it, it, was, it was brilliant. Even for the stage two, it was excellent. Now be prepared when you take this car to Litchfield, to have that gearbox map because it's less harsh. So when you put it in first and you pin it, it isn't, it's not a delay, but they've obviously curbed the power. So it, it's not getting full power. Why is that? Because these things chew up transmissions. They're very expensive. So that's why everybody gets this done. But in second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth, I would say it holds better. There's obviously with the map on the engine, there's a, I would say the power comes in better. Check I'm doing 50. The power comes in better. Um, I, I would actually say mid range is this car is a lot better. Um, pops and bangs, Litchfield. I can't say that they don't do pops and bangs because they do. It's on map one. Are they the best at it? No, I don't think they are. But Obviously, I didn't take it there for the pops and bangs. I took this car down to Litchfield because of the experience. I know that they have a really good track record with these cars. There's other companies out there that claim to have good, or know what they're doing with these cars. I'm going with what I've seen and, and what Litchfield's done and their past and their history. That, that, that was enough for me to take it to them. Um, I could have gone somewhere else and saved myself a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds, 
on a cheaper way of doing the 4.25 which caps off for 650 uh, brake horse but uh, um, I just didn't feel comfortable and obviously I paid extra money when we're Litchfield so I'm maybe like one of them sheep that, that just follows I don't know um, anyway so what else can I tell you about this car you're driving this car as we are now at 50 miles per hour very good it, it's as normal but once you plow your foot down on the go faster pedal <laughs> It's, it becomes a total different beast. Now, it depends what you like as a person. Now, I could live with this car because I get the best of both worlds. So, you know, if I'm driving at 50, which I'm driving at now, great, you can cope with it. But as soon as you go up to 80 miles per hour, there's a constant drone. Anything below is great. You can travel this car 70 miles per hour, which just face it, is the speed limit it's acceptable you can do it but my advice is to people out there that if you get you know that, that that little thing in your head that you want no rear silencer on this car straight through trust me i've been in one i mean I'm not that old but you know i do like a bit of peace and quiet these days but i couldn't travel no more than one hour in a car with a straight through exhaust to me they're too loud the drones there all of the time yet they sound wicked for all of 10 minutes and then you're going to give your ass an headache so my advice is keep with the rear silencer and just keep with obviously the white pipe the, the down pipes that to me is enough and also you know if, if, if you've got neighbors make sure you pull off nice and gentle in the morning as well <laughs> because you don't need them uh, uh, section 59s which costs you 150 pounds the outlook on a 4.25 gear changes are smoother not as harsh so the initial acceleration from first isn't as quick but the the pros of this is your gearbox is gonna last longer that's the way they should be set up i feel from the beginning because these these cars did have from 2009 onwards had a lot of problems with the gearbox so let's feel obviously this map's been proven and around forever so fantastic so 4.25 would i get it done yes i would um a few quid you know in all fairness but if you want a gtr i want to say obviously you can afford these luxuries but i think 4.25 is a stage to go to anything above that to be honest i don't think it's worth it for how much it costs you it's just to get that extra 50 60 hours they can double in price so 4.25 is the way to go anyway folks hope you like the video also i'm sorry again if i didn't shout a scream like a big girl in this one like every other video i see out there says 4.25 obviously done my homework you see people, oh my god, I'm like, what have you done to my car, I'm like, <coughs> really? Really? Jesus. God, that winds me up. Honestly, if you're in this car, I'm telling you now, right, I've drove faster cars. These people screaming like girls say, oh, it's all dramatic. Get over yourselves. YouTubers, really? Yeah, we all like a bit of being dramatic. Jesus, you're in the seats like you're pissing your pants. 4.25 is good, but it ain't that good. You ain't like in a 2,000 horsepower car where it looks like you've just left your skid mark on the freaking seat. So listen, you lot out there, you YouTubers out there selling these cars, all these other people, all these mods, this and the other, you need to be a bit more truthful and tell them really how it is. No. I ain't gonna name any names on YouTube because I don't think I'm allowed. But you not, you lot know who you are out there that bullshit everybody else about the different stages of cars. Anyway, that's my rant over. 4.25 is all right, but you ain't gonna piss your knickers, folks. It's, it's all right. If you're used to half decent cars and, and whatever else, uh, don't get me wrong, if you're the family man that's come from a diesel, Monteo to this, yeah, it is going to light up your world. Give it a couple of days, you're going to get used to it. It's just how it is. 
But anyway, we're going to turn the video up there. Sorry about the rant. Uh, if you like what you see, please like, share and subscribe. Ciao, ciao for now.